This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I am Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. It's Sadie's night. I poured myself a teeny tiny bit of chilled red wine. It really is like the smallest little tiny bit. Yeah, I don't do that, but it sounded so delicious and, you know, hashtag self-care or whatever, just... Have a four fluid milliliters of wine every once in a while. That's what I always say. Yeah. I thought you were going to say four loco. Have a four loco. (laughs) Hashtag self care. Once I'm done with my four milliliters of chilled red wine, I've got a four loco lined up behind it. So it's going to get. What was that? Party rock. It's going to be party rock tonight. (laughs) You know what else is loco? Murder. This story. Oh, God. Take it away, Sadie. What do we got tonight? Uh, this is the torture and murder of Terry Neely. Blah, blah, blah. I hate yeah. it already. Yeah. Yep, yep. At 5 a.m. on August 5th, 2009, dispatchers received a 911 call after someone found a burning trash can in the parking lot of the Covenant of Grace Church in Phoenix, Arizona. When firefighters arrived to put out the fire, they realized in horror that inside the trash can were human remains. Oh, yikes. Mm -hmm. Police were called to the scene and the body was determined to belong to a man, but because of the terrible condition of his body, it was impossible to identify any of his other features. Mm. The man had been partially dismembered and put into the trash can before he was lit on fire. Oh, God. The evidence at the scene showed that he had been dumped at the church and had been murdered at a different location. An autopsy would show the victim had died in a horrific way and had been tortured before being killed. Nope. It's a little trigger warning. It's it's pretty gruesome. He had multiple blunt force injuries to his head, including having a three-inch screw impaled through his forehead into his brain. No. He was stabbed more than 50 times, including a shallow cut to his throat. Oh, Courtney, you're not going to like it. I don't like any. I don't like if it's teeth or nails. Yeah. No. (laughs) All of his teeth had been crudely removed. Oh, my God. No. And he was found with a cord from a television set wrapped tightly around his neck. Good God. The coroner found that most of these wounds had started healing, meaning he'd been alive while all of this happened to him. Mm -mm. They determined his cause of death was from strangulation. Authorities couldn't use his dental records to identify him because he had no teeth in his mouth. Even though his hands were badly burned, just enough of his fingerprints were still intact so they could put together some partial fingerprints. Boy. No. They were able to use them to identify their victim as 46-year-old Terry Neely. Terry Neely was born on October 21st, 1962. He was a quadriplegic who could use his legs. I know. Who could use his legs, but for only a short amount of time. Oh my God. He was described as a friendly man who was easy to get along with. He had a developmental disability that caused him to struggle with problem solving and good decision making. Mm Mm-hmm. Before his death, Terry had been living in an assisted living facility and got around with the use of his motorized wheelchair. Police were able to obtain security footage from the assisted living facility that showed Terry leaving in his wheelchair around 8 p.m. on August 2nd, three days before his body had been found. Oh no, three days. Three days. (laughs) The wheelchair had not been at the scene of the crime. They hoped it would lead them to their killer. Mm Mm-hmm. They asked the other residents of the assisted living facility and neighbors if they knew where Terry had gone, but no one knew. He had no known enemies who would want to hurt him. As word spread of Terry's murder, tips began to come in. When someone called saying that they had found an abandoned motorized wheelchair at an apartment complex near Terry's home, police hurried to investigate. They confirmed it belonged to Terry and started questioning the residents of the apartments in the complex. 
One resident told police that in the early morning hours of August 5th, he had noticed smoke coming from his neighbor's apartment. Ugh. When he knocked on the door to see what was smoking, 33-year-old Angela Simpson answered. As they talked, he saw a City of Phoenix trash can in the kitchen and realized Simpson's friend, who was known as, quote, Cracker, was also there at the time. They asked to borrow his car, and he agreed. When Simpson brought the car back a few hours later, she told the neighbor she had, quote, killed Neely and cut him up. Then they threatened to kill him if he said anything about what had taken place. Well, there you go. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know. Wow. Real quick. This God, is one of those. Not even just, uh, he's not here. He went home. I'll give him the keys. <laughs> just straight confession. Yep. Yep. Jeez. We did this. Don't tell anybody. Wow. Police were able to obtain a search warrant for Simpson's apartment. And I read some things said it was her apartment. Some said it was just somewhere she frequented, but uh -huh. regardless. Once inside, they noticed the carpet had been torn up and there was very minimal furniture, just a chair and a floor length mirror. Oh my God. That is bone chilling. Yeah. Yes. They found needle nose pliers, a gallon of great value brand bleach and a lot of blood. No, <laughs> I know. Police gathered samples of the blood for DNA comparison. Luckily, Simpson had been arrested earlier that day with her friend Cracker, uh, who, just on a side note, he happens to have a very large neck tattoo across his neck that says uh -huh. Cracker. <laughs> I'm going to post pictures, but just in case. Uh, she was with a guy named Cracker. Mm, this uh -huh. guy named Cracker with a literal Cracker tattoo on his neck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yes, guy. That, yep, it's like, no, no, it wasn't me. It was the other guy. Uh, so this this joker's name was his real name was edward mcfarland they had been charged with armed robbery just a few hours before police wanted to question them for terry's murder uh -huh. so little is known about angela simpson she isn't the type to talk about her personal life she was born on november 29th 1975 and had four children before she was arrested boy she had a rough upbringing with most of the members of her family spending time in and out of prison. Mm -hmm. She admitted to having mental health problems and says they started when she was 10, but won't go into details about what the troubles are. She started using drugs when she was a teen and committed petty crimes and started working as a sex worker to support her habit. None of her four children ever lived with her, and she has spent her adult life in and out of prison for trespassing, aggravated assault, carjacking, and robbery. Uh-huh. So when police interviewed Simpson, she told them she would confess to the crimes in exchange for a candy bar. What is happening? Yep. She laughed as she described the murder and explained that she and Terry were acquaintances, but hadn't known each other very well. Mm. When they would hang out, Terry would brag to her about being a, quote, snitch for the CIA and said he put multiple people in jail. Uh, there's no proof of this actually being true. <laughs> I mean, oh I'd be surprised. Uh -huh. um, and the local police said he never worked for them as an informant. Oh, shocking. <laughs> right. Simpson said this had infuriated her, so she decided to kill him. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. She lured Terry into her apartment with the promise of sex and drugs. Once he was inside, she started beating him over the head with a tire iron and then kept him alive for three days while she tortured him. What the fuck? She said she made him sit in front of a mirror so he could watch as she beat, stabbed, impaled him with a screw and pulled his teeth out. That is some uh, next level horror. Mm-hmm. She said her only regret was that she hadn't kept him alive longer. Oh my god. Once Terry was dead, she dismembered him enough so he would fit inside the trash can, and then she had McFarland help her get the trash can into the borrowed car, where she then disposed of Terry's body in the parking lot after lighting it on fire. Uh -huh. The DNA collected at her apartment would eventually come back from the lab as a match to Terry corroborating Simpson's story. Authorities arrested Edward McFarland as well and charged him with abandonment or concealment of a dead body and hindering prosecution. Mm -hmm. um, and I read here and there little bits of him. He said that he was more involved in the crime, that he helped kill Terry. And really? Then, but then said he didn't. And she says he never did. He wasn't a part of it at all. Uh -huh. um, and so it's 
they, they couldn't find any evidence to connect him directly to the murder. And so he was never charged with it. Interesting. It definitely sounds like something that would be hard for a woman to do by herself. Yep. 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 So in March of 2012, two and a half years after her arrest, Simpson pleaded guilty to first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility for parole. Shocking. Yeah. Edward McFarland also pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 20 years. Wow. After being sentenced, Simpson agreed to sit for a jailhouse interview with a reporter from a local news station out of Phoenix. Her honesty and the blunt way she answered the reporter's questions was is shocking. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to play it for you now. And I want to do a quick trigger for racial slurs, including the N-word. Angela, I've seen previous interviews and I've with the police and uh, one of our colleagues talked to you once upon a time. Uh, you're very upfront. Pretty much about talking about this killing. Right. You, you murdered this man. Yes. You tortured him. Of course. There is no ambiguity and there is nothing you want us... In court today you said uh, you're not here to pretend to be remorseful. Of course not. Why would I do that? Are you remorseful? Not at all. Why? Why would I be? Well, I, wh- why, why did this man deserve to die? You, you, you claimed he was a snitch. Well, what proof do you have of that? He told me he was a snitch told you. on many occasions. But that really doesn't matter. Why did you guys want to kill me? Phoenix wanted to kill me. What's the difference? Everybody has a reason to kill. My reason might not be good to you, but your reason wasn't good to me. So. Um, the incident, can you tell me anything about what happened during those three days while you were... What this? do you mean? I know. Uh, it's I like took him to my house. Walked him down the street. I don't know why the media acts like the motherfucker couldn't walk. He walked very well. Walked him upstairs, kicked his ass, and killed him. And and again, you, the, your belief is that he was a snitch because he right. told you. Uh, you claimed that uh, that other people had been killed in that same part. You had killed other people. Have you killed other no, people? No, I've never killed anyone else. So that was something, just talk. Right. Time. How do you feel about spending the rest of your life in prison? You know, I got a lot of family in prison, and uh, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I got many sisters in prison. I can't wait to see them. It's really not that much of a punishment to be sentenced to spend my life with my family. Uh, and you, you, you don't want to talk about your, your past, but your lawyer said that, you know what, they, in, in sentencing you, the judge should bear in mind that you had a really, you had a really right. tough life. I started being hospitalized at 10 years old. I have a mental history from 10 years old until yeah. present, so, yeah. When you say mental history, I mean, do, do you care that anyone feels sorry for you? Do you want anybody? Feel sorry for me. Yeah, do you, should, should the people who are watching this say because she had a bad child? Of course not. Because she had, has mental illness? Of course not, no. That we should feel some sympathy for no. you? No. You would not have that? I want no sympathy, no. What, then, then do you care what anybody thinks about no. Angela Simpson and what no. you have done? No, I don't. It's a, again, your candor, uh, I've interviewed people who have committed murders before and usually they sort of prevaricate or they uh, this or that. You're about as direct as it gets. Right. Why is that? It's only fair. I expect you to be the same way. Okay. Uh, do you think that it was fair today? It was justice in that courtroom? No, I don't. Why? I should have gotten the death penalty. Do you, did you want the death penalty? No, no. I prefer to spend my life with my sisters, but uh, yeah, I do believe that would have been justice. So you deserve death penalty, but you're glad that you got what you got right. because you. Right. Right. Uh, when you say your sisters, you're talking about women you know in prison. Right. Okay. And is, uh, have you found that, uh, uh, that there is some bonding and that you have made friends here that, uh, that will be of some comfort to you when you're in Most prison? Most definitely, yes. Most definitely, yes. Yeah. What has the experience been like here uh, in this facility? Horrible. Really? Yes, it's terrible. Jail is awful. They don't, um, they have no, well, they, they have no compassion. They don't give us the things we need here. Will be, will prison to you, to the, your understanding? I have certainly hope so, yes. Yeah. Have you done time in prison? No. So you're hoping that, that it will be a better 
existence. Yes, you, yeah? definitely. You're a young woman, 36 years old. You could be there a long time. Right. Right. But your belief is that you deserve the death penalty. Definitely. Well, I believe God. That's what God says. Unless God is wrong, which I doubt. So. And where would God would, has told you that, or you just believe that? I believe eye that. For an eye. Right. Right. I expected to die for this. Uh, to, what can you? What, what insights can you give us to to you? Uh, what would you have the anyone who may hear this interview know about you? There's really nothing. People are going to believe what they want to believe. Judge the way they want to judge, just like I do. So, yeah. So be it. What? Why did you feel like you were in a position to be the judge and jury in in Terry Neely's life? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm really not trying to be to, to get right. too angry, but I just I want to see you. You're very, you say I killed this guy. He deserved right. to die. Blah blah blah. I mean, it's pretty. It's there. You're up right. front. Uh, I want to know. Uh, if if uh, you have any concerns about what you know, what what put you in that position to do that to them? Yeah. It was just too much. The things he talked about, it was just it was too much. Do you believe him? I mean, lots of people go around well, claiming I'm a snitch or make themselves. <laughs> really, you don't say. Well, I, I think they, they <laughs> talk about law. I've got uh, I, I know people come. I've got associations with law enforcement. You know, I, I've got this. I'm, I'm I'm a friend with this. Do person. you happen to have a list of those people? They name drop. Well. Maybe in the circle, but you right. know what I'm saying. Right. People say lots of things to make themselves sort of look. Well, he picked the wrong nigger to say that to if he wanted to brag about putting so many people in prison. Uh, he picked the wrong person. And that's what, that's what did it to him. That's, what, that's why you... What, the bragging? The bragging oh, yeah. about putting people in prison. Right. People you knew? No. No, but I don't know any of them. Okay. Do you believe him? Do you think he really was a snitch? <laughs> Oops, if he wasn't. Yes, I, I believe he was. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, uh, do you have family? I do. Uh, from an adopted family? or I have four children. You have four children? I do have four children. Where are they? El Mirage. What is, uh, how are they doing? Uh, and uh, how is it for you to be separated from them? I, I don't want to talk about my children. Do that. Yeah. Is there is there a message for what is there a bottom line or a lesson to be learned from the story of Angela Simpson? There's a bottom line to everything. But what would, what is the bottom line to I, this story? Whatever people want it to be. If I it it, it doesn't what matter do what I say. <laughs> I don't know. In insights uh, that you you don't regret killing this guy. I don't regret killing him. No, I regret the fact that my co-defendants found it necessary to uh, divulge so much information to the detectives. I regret that they were people I really cared about, and uh, I regret that they were near me or around me at any point. And then helped prosecutors. Help the prosecution. Correct. You were and they those people. Definitely, because they didn't know, they weren't actually with me during any of my crimes. So for them to say that they were, to try to get lesser sentences, was a little heartbreaking for me. So friends of yours lied to prosecutors and lied to police. Correct. Dropped the dime on you. Correct. They snitched on you. Correct. If you could, would you do to them what uh, you did no, to Terry? No, I would not. Because you still have some relationship with them? or Well, no, but they were, I had a claimed a bond with them at one point, so I, I wouldn't be able to avenge that. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you act completely alone in that? Yes, part? definitely. So nobody else helped? No. Totally alone. Uh, help me understand. Uh, for three, you know, I, I know uh, the crimes of passion or something, and, you know, in, in the heat of the moment, uh, but to spend three days driving nails into a guy's head and pulling his teeth out. Right. Why? I found it necessary. Did you find it pleasurable or exciting, or was there was this just, just a necessary? 
necessary. Right. So this was more like a business-like uh, proposition. You were doing something that you felt need a job that needed to be done. Right. Really. Right. And whatever came into your head, I'm going to drive a nail into his head. Or was this just was uh, a, a symptom of what was at hand in that apartment? Right. Yeah. Right. Any, uh, w you, your mom and I, I'd like to, because we've got to get run back, and right. I, I want to get what you say on television. And we again, I'm grateful that you would be willing to talk to us, and I, I wish you the best under these Thank circumstances. You. What, uh, what would you have the world know? You're a fascin You're sort of an interesting character, because uh, you know, first of all, women generally don't commit crimes this heinous. Right. Uh, you know, this is usually the domain of men. That's unfortunate. You think more women? Oh yeah, equal opportunity, definitely. And I know you're being sort of a smart aleck to Slightly me. sarcastic. But uh, yeah, but seriously, I, I mean, in in some ways, uh, I've been covering murder and mayhem, and covered serial killers to petty shoot 'em ups, and uh, you don't meet many women who commit the kind of uh, calculated, long-term murder that you committed with this guy, uh, and s you don't meet many people who are willing to say, "I did it," and you know what? deal with it. Right. That's the way it should be, in my opinion. Are you, but you seem so, you, you, you seem like you're sort of just, I, I, I'm sort of almost self-righteous about, I, I did this and I did, do you think you did the right thing of by course, killing this guy? Definitely. But other than shooting his mouth off, what else did he do that you know of? That's not, that's what he, that's what he got done for. Shoot He's white him. trash, somebody had to take it out, that's it. Was there a racial component to it? Oh, there's always a racial component. Okay. And what do you mean by that? I'm not going to elaborate on that at all. Okay. But, <laughs> but the, the fact that you're, you're uh, a black woman and he's a white guy, that factored into your killing him? Yeah. I wouldn't kill another black individual. Okay. Would you, if you had that moment to live over again? I'd have kept him alive a week. But you would have still tortured him and killed him. Oh, I had have tortured him for a week, yeah, instead of three days, definitely. So your only regret is that the torture didn't go on any longer. Right, and I regret not killing my other victim. I should have killed him, too. I just didn't have time. I had to go somewhere. And tell so. me who that other victim was. Joseph Van Tress for the armed robbery. Yeah. I should have killed him, but I had to go. Will you kill again? If the opportunity arises, I hope so. Okay, let's, we're done. Are you done? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Angela. Good shit, dude. That's going to be crazy, isn't it? <laughs> That's going to be wicked. Make it look good, please. Oh, you're, you're going to put this on, too? I'm going to. Well, like, you know, why not? <laughs> Don't put the ending on. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Best, uh, honestly, best wishes to you. And, uh, right. right. Ladies, thank you. Thank you. Very real. I can't. I can honestly can't. Tell me again. This guy is incorrigible. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm incorrigible. Right, that's not you. He's incorrigible. We're both incorrigible. Right. Best wishes to you. Right, right. Thank okay, you. Let me chat for a living. Um, I have a. Uh, All right. Well. So. Um, so. What the fuck? First of all, I highly recommend that. You all watch that mm -hmm. interview. Those are some Charles Manson eyes, if I have ever First seen them. First of all, yes. Holy darkness of evil. What the fuck? I mean, yeah. it's like there is a total disconnect. There's like five disconnects, you know? Mm -hmm. The soul doesn't match. The mouth doesn't match. The brain doesn't mm -hmm. match the eyes. Mm -hmm. She's so fucking smart. Mm-hmm. She's so articulate. And then the ending? Mm -hmm. That's all I really want to talk about. I mean, the whole interview is so crazy, but then the ending, she just swi the like flips a switch. It's like primal fear for real. Yes. I mean, she's yep. not trying to hide the fact that she did it, clearly. Right. But she knows what she's doing. She yes. knows she's giving a chilling interview. She knows yes. she's being like 
pervasive and sort of vague Mm -hmm. and creepy and like over the top. Yes. Yes. Yep. She is 100% putting on a show in that interview. 100%. Mm -hmm. I also noticed when he said, or did you do it by yourself? She like looked down into the left. Like she did a total tell that she was lying Mm -hmm. when she's like, nope, I did it all by myself. Nobody helped me or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. Like what is it? What is that? Yeah. I don't know. I'm guessing this is all just my guess. It feels, you know, a little bit, like a psychopath and also super narcissistic. Yes. I feel like Terry was total pawn for her show that she wanted to make a splash and boy, did she? Yes. Well, and she Mm -hmm. says, yeah, of course it was racial. Of course it was, you know, so clearly she wanted to punish a white guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's either punish a white guy or just make it about race because that'll get more headlines and more Ooh, attention. Good call. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or both. Probably both. Yeah. I'm going to talk know. about it here in a second, too, about what I think about the racial card being played. Right. Yeah. Because uh, old McFarland there, he was a skinhead. Right. No. Yeah. So it's oh not about God. race. It's not a race card. She, if, she, if she's willing to be BFFs with Cracker. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. No, Terry was just an easy target. Yeah, disabled. Mm -hmm. Clearly a little delusional. Yeah, an easy easy prey. She knew exactly how to get him into her apartment. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That is so chilling. Mm -hmm. It's so (laughs) fucked up. She is such a baddie. Yeah, I know. And so I picked this case because of that interview. Yep. And I was like, oh boy, let's get into this. And then there wasn't a fucking thing to be right. found about her or Terry. And it's just a problem. So um, I read, uh, I don't know if it was a blog or I forget which, what, what part of what I was reading was talking about how she is trying to be like an Aileen Wernos, Wernos uh-huh, type. Uh-huh. And... I thought that was interesting because that's definitely, I get that sort of vibe. Like, but I think I, Eileen was but Eileen more was authentic. Right. Yeah. But yes. that's sort of who she was channeling to be. Uh huh. Like, crazy. I, you know, the whole talk about pedophiles killing snitches and pedophiles and you aren't a hero in this. You didn't do something good for the world. No. You tortured and murdered a disabled man. Yep, that makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Eileen Warnos was fully enveloped by her, what she was doing mm-hmm. and why she was doing mm-hmm. it. And it was a big old trauma response mm-hmm. and mental health issues, etc. Mm-hmm. But it was fully authentic. And mm-hmm. this girl, man, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So after this interview, or I don't even actually know if it was after, but she would go on to say that she had... Uh, that this wasn't the only time that she'd killed someone. Right. But she wouldn't say how many other victims there were. And then Uh later she retracted the statement. I think that maybe was in the interview, wasn't it? She Um, did mention, yeah. He said, you said you hurt this one or killed this one. And she said, it's not true. Right. It's just talk. So (laughs) interesting. So sort of a side note. In May of this year, a TikTok, quote, acting challenge started. Like a trend started uh-huh. using the audio from Simpsons television interview. <laughs> oh my God. So in these videos, you can hear Simpson say, quote, he told me he was a snitch on many occasions. I took him to my house, walked him down the street. I don't know why the media acts like the motherfucker couldn't walk. He walked very well, walked him upstairs, kicked his ass and killed him. And then you hear the male interviewer reply, do you think he was really a snitch? And then Simpson replies, oops, if he wasn't. Yes, I believe he was. That is so funny because I saw somebody doing that yesterday and I was like, what is this audio? This is so <laughs> random. And then I didn't put it together today, but that's what it oh, was. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this yes. is weird. I don't know what this is from. Must be a, some Gen Z movie that they all love or something. Oh, my God. Oh my God. What the fuck? Of all the audio, of all the clips, of all the things. And of even of that interview, that's what... I don't 
get it. I no. don't understand these trends. No, well, not that one. And I mean, I, people, I think in the comments, people get called out like this is an actual murderer saying these yeah. things about an actual person. And so I was thinking, well, this trend has probably died out because it's fucked up. And I looked today to see and oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it is it is going strong. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Train is out of the station. Yep. What the fuck? Yep. In the TikTok videos, you see the people mouth along to Simpson's interview with expressions to match their voice, which is just mm-hmm. gross. I don't want to watch mm-hmm. people act on TikTok. Yep. Some creators even captioned the footage, hashtag murder. Actress Krista Allen, who played a young Jennifer Garner in 13 going on 30, took part in the challenge. She mm-hmm. has a following of over a million people, and her videos have amassed nearly 400,000 views. Those She has two of them that she did with that audio. Wow. In between those two, they've, yeah, they've reached about 400,000 views. So besides the TikTok video. <laughs> yeah. Which is so, just bizarre. Yeah, it really is. Um, I already talked about how there was a complete lack of background information on Terry and Simpson. And it seems like when the victim's life isn't one that would be seen in, in sympathetic light, it isn't shared as much yep. right so i'm yeah. i'm just assuming that terry had a fucking hard life started hard it ended hard and the hardest yeah we just don't get to know about it yeah um it's also a bummer that a hard life equals unimportant yeah because i was yeah yeah i feel like he was used only to tell the story of his horrific death and not to honor his life in any way yeah i even found a television interview with a friend of Terry's and they chose only the clips where he talked about how terrible his death was and didn't share anything about who Terry was or who he had been to his friend. What the fuck? Yeah. It was so strange. I was like, okay, finally this guy knew him. He'll talk to him. Be like, they'll ask who was Terry. Nope. No, he just says he, he was too sad. He couldn't go to the, the hearings because it made him too sad. And his death was so horrific and how mad he was at Simpson for doing it. And then the clip ended, and that was it. Oh, my God. I was also struck by headlines like, quote, Black woman dismembers disabled white man. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that's that's a fucking problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, that headline helps no one. It doesn't mm-hmm. further any causes. It doesn't honor any victims. It doesn't fucking solve any future issues. It's just clickbait bullshit. Yep. Yep. Crazy black woman killing the poor old white guy. It's disgusting. Yep. Yep. Also, these articles fail to mention that Simpson's accomplice, Cracker, oh, I already said that, was a white skinhead. (laughs) Yes, that is, I mean, big fucking surprise, but my God. Mm -hmm. Yep. No mention of that in there anywhere. And I really do think he probably was part of it. Yeah. Definitely. There was some, again, it's all speculation. I think there was a Reddit thread that said that there was a rumor that Cracker was Simpson's pimp mm-hmm. and that something went wrong and he he was the one that killed Terry and she took the fall for it because of their, their relationship. But I, there's nothing right. to corroborate that. Right. Regardless. Yeah. It seems like a lot for her to carry that out on her own mm-hmm. without some sort of help. No. And I also, I wonder a lot about like, they didn't hear him scream, you know? Right. Like, yeah. It's an apartment complex. I don't know. I don't it's know either. It's such a fuck. It's so sad. It's horrifying. It's horrifying that somebody, this woman, could get to that point to do that thing, to give that interview, to be that person, mm-hmm. to just revel in misery mm-hmm. and chaos. It's mm-hmm. like the fact that there are human beings with that inside of them roaming this earth mm-hmm. is incomprehensible. Like, yep. wow. Wow. How and why and where and ugh, mm-hmm. yep. and knowing there's no way to stop it. Well, and the fact that we haven't like completely dissected it, you know, That's what like I mean. yeah, yes. like how have we not just sat down and pulled this a piece by piece to figure out how and why and who and all of it? Like yeah, nope, she just did it, and now we're moving on with our lives. It's just baffling. Well, she's so diabolical too that it's. It would be very hard, I would imagine, to pull the la- the layers of that onion back. Mm-hmm. And maybe there are none. Maybe she's just bad. Maybe her life was like middle class and fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah, I don't I think mean? it was, but yes. No, I don't think so either. But, <laughs> yes. you know, it would be very hard to know if what she was telling you is true mm-hmm. based on that interview. Totally. 
Yes. You know, she's a full blown psychopath, full blown sociopath, mm-hmm. narcissist. Mm-hmm. She knows what she's doing, and I'm dying to know why she does it, but mm-hmm. I think she just does. I think that there are some people who just do that. And maybe it was childhood events that led up to her brain breaking to the point that she could do that and be that person. That happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Or maybe she was just born that way. That's what I want to know. Like, right. I know that's what every brain doctor out there wants to know. And if they had figured that out, we would have some sort of better solve for it. But yep. Oh my God. I just, yeah. I hope in my lifetime we get to figure that out because I, so too. I have to fucking know. Yeah. I read a blog and they said that they tried to write her in prison and she responded, but they couldn't get her to say anything of substance at all. Right. Right. Yeah. But she did ma- manage to get married in prison. Somebody oh, married her. Of course mm-hmm. she did. Yeah. Of course she did. My beautiful, yep. eligible, successful friends can't find a fucking date, mm-hmm. but Angela, Angela Simpson. gets married. Yeah. Yep, she does. So I would love to end the story with a heartfelt quote from Terry's family and friends talking about how justice was served and how much they miss him. But apparently Terry's life didn't matter enough to the media to bother. Yep. I'm so sorry for this. And I'm so sorry he had to die in such a senseless, horrific way. My heart is with him and those that loved him. Same. Fucking bullshit. Bullshit. So and sorry, it's Terry. such a sensational case. When I saw her face, I've definitely seen her face before. Yep. You know, I know that this is a known case and mm-hmm. it's, you know, you give that interview, people are going to know who you are. Mm-hmm. And the fact that there's not, there's still not anything about him yeah. or who he was. Not or... at all. I mean, like nothing. What I read to you is all I could find. Um, I was just shocked in general. I went through the newspaper archives. Try, I, I couldn't, there was no obituary, <sighs> you know, and he could just be a lost soul with really no long-term relationships, but I don't know because nobody will tell me. Right. You know? There's got to be something good about him. He liked to feed the pigeons. I mean, Seriously. something, you yeah. know, something about the poor person. Yep. Everybody's got something. Yep. <laughs> that's very disturbing i hate everything about it yeah yep. ah. so, i don't know terry's story just makes me want to honor you know we put when we talk about victims we want them to be in a positive light or share the things yeah. that were important to their families and friends and um, yep. but i also think that it's important to share the the hard bad stuff too it's okay to be human Yes. You know, and to have a life of struggle and it does not diminish your worth whatsoever. You still deserve yeah. to be loved and to be honored and cherished and through that struggle, you know, like I think yeah. it's bullshit. I would really like to know what his life was like, good and bad. Give it to me. I'll take all of it. Absolutely. Well, and we had um, the daughter of Susie and Carno reach out to us and we're going to interview her next week for a Patreon episode. We covered the case on Patreon and I'm very interested to see what she has to say, but, you know, her father was murdered and her mother's in prison for it. And she's like, you know, this isn't, the story you told is not an accurate story. You know, it's a story that's out there Mm -hmm. and she's like working to get her mother's story out there more. But then, you know, thinking about the kids and how little information is out there about the kids Mm -hmm. and how fucking victimized they are Mm -hmm. and how there are so many victims and so little attention given. I mean, we talk about this all the time, but so little attention given to them, so little care or thought, Mm -hmm. like we're all just so wrapped up in selling headlines, solving cases that like what really matters gets overlooked Mm -hmm. on far too many occasions. And I, you know, I'm a hundred percent sure we're guilty of that too. Absolutely. You know, and what we're doing you know, as well-intentioned as you can possibly be. There's just no way you're going to get it right, especially with this format, with the, like, conversational kind of jokey thing that we do. Mm -hmm. Um, It's always going to be a little disrespectful no matter what, and we are aware and acknowledge that. And, yeah, it's definitely something that's been on my mind, and this Mm -hmm. case is a really good example of how we get it wrong. Yep. Not we, you and I. We had nothing to do with the (laughs) Angela Simpson Syracuse, but... (laughs) we as a society royal we yeah yep she's us so i know it's do you know how we get it right gabby petito man oh man man 
Oh, I mean, man. we don't need to go into detail about this no. case because everybody that is on the earth at this moment knows everything about it. But kudos to the fucking YouTubers and TikTokers mm-hmm. that just solved <laughs> it's so crazy. this case in record time. Yes. Yes. That is incredible. No, We all need to go be like influencers so that our listeners will be like, oh my God. So I know what she doesn't usually capitalize her T's and now she is. So she's dead. And then they're like, I mean, solved. seriously, it's yeah. all, it's just so tragic. Mm-hmm. I mean, deeply, deeply tragic that she's gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all, of course, hoped that she wasn't, but knew that she probably mm-hmm. was and confirming that she is, is just so devastating. But to have like an army of people solving your loved one's case. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Well done, everyone. Seriously. Yep. And the fact that a YouTuber was driving through this remote park oh, and God. happened upon the van. It's just like... It gives me chills. Holy shit. I'm glad somebody was looking out for her. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like hundreds of thousands of someone's. Yeah. That's what. That's the best you can hope for, really. You yep. know, that that many people care about you, that they figure it out and hopefully bring... Whoever, wink, wink, did it to justice. Mm -hmm. So our hearts definitely go out to her family hard. I mean, on the flip side, everybody knows about Mm -hmm. this tragedy that your family is enduring. So that can't be, that's, I just can't begin to imagine. But yeah, I would hope that this brings them some peace that so many fucking people care. Big time. Yep. Yep. Let's spread that love and care to all the victims. All the victims. All the missing people. Yes. Big time. Well, uh, that's c- cool. This is a fun <laughs> week. <laughs> it always is, Court. It always is. <gasps> yeah, but lately, it's like ooh, heavy duty. Yeah. Uh, but the you only know. thing that'll bust us out of the deep, dark depression that we um, dig ourselves into every ourselves week. in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is names Woo-hoo! got a heap of names because you guys are the best and you keep on keeping them on <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> uh there's something called the cox sexy test <laughs> wait say that again cox sexy test <laughs> cox sexy cox sexy cox sexy said, test cox sexy C O X S A C K S I E. Wow. Cock sexy. sexy. And they say sexy. I mean, <laughs> sounds sexy. Yeah, what is sexy? Uh, they said it has nothing to do with either of those parts of the body. <laughs> so not the cocks or, or the, the sex. sex. <laughs> or the sex. <laughs> or the sex. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I don't. Well, it's a cock sexy test. I don't know. Fuck. That's a, let's just leave it be part okay. of our imagination. Somebody right? tell me. Yeah. Somebody will tell me. Let's just stay impregnated with wonder, like Pete Holmes yes. says. Uh, there's a lawyer named Sue. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. She had a destiny and shit. she fulfilled it. She did. That's Courtney's new name. Sue you. Sue yeah. <laughs> Mine will be... Uh, Amanda Pate. Amanda Pate. Because I'm Amanda, like Amanda, uh-huh, from Amanda you. Pate. I'll be Amanda Pate. It's Amanda Pate. There you go. That's a good one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> there was a wedding announcement for Joseph McDonald, who married Elizabeth Berger. <laughs> a McDonald Berger. <laughs> I hope they hyphenated. <laughs> um, some towns. Boring Oregon. Which yes. I can't believe we never thought of Boring Oregon no. before. Love Boring. <laughs> There's Booger Hole, West Virginia. <laughs> of course there is. How can that be true? How four, can there be a Booger Hole? It's four-year-old. Virginia? They let the four-year-old yes. pick. <laughs> There's a ding dong Texas. <laughs> and I said, and with Governor Abbott at the helm, that seems to fit more. Yes, than it, it does. <laughs> it's where he was born. <laughs> I hail from Ding Dong, Texas. Yeah, no shit. We, yeah, we know. Um, 
There's a bitter end, Tennessee. Oh, That's where I hail from. Just yes. kidding. I'm pretty happy. <laughs> but this is definitely where I hail from. Pee Pee Creek, Ohio. <laughs> Same four-year-old who totally. named Ding Dong, Texas, named Pee Pee Creek, Ohio. No, Booger Hole. It was Booger Hole. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And, and Ding Dong. And Ding Dong. Uh, Hunter Pepper. Is it, Did you find Hunter Pepper? <laughs> I did. I think Sadie felt very proud of herself. I did. Hunter it was like, a, it was like one of those I talk about. Uh, I follow people that are like calling out anti-vaxxers who are like covid's no big deal and then they get mm-hmm. sick or die and one of these guys is like a super anti-vaxxer and i don't think he's dead um but his name was hunter pepper <laughs> hunter pepper <laughs> and i kept giggling i was like watching this really <laughs> sad and fucked up story and i was thinking about how that's dr pepper's <laughs> dr pepper's uh step like, brother half like, brother hunt, yeah his like cousin who likes to hunt <laughs> oh my god I had this whole thing going on. <laughs> Thank you, Lexapro. <laughs> Hunter Pepper, you know, he's like, they just call him doctor. But he's, he's a redneck like, hunter guy. He lives in a, like Arkansas, and Dr. Pepper hails from New England, and but Hunter Pepper lives in like Arkansas. He's a Hunter <laughs> Pepper. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a park in Tallahassee. That's the Dorothy B. Oven Park. <laughs> I found that. I love that. I know, Dorothy B. Oven. Oven. I'm assuming the B stands for? Bread. Bit. <laughs> Did you say bitch? Yes. Yes, I was. <laughs> Dorothy Bitch <Bad>. Oven. <laughs> oh, popping right out of the bitch oven. Hot and fresh. <laughs> Woo! That's me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Christian Todd Rex wrote. <laughs> what the fuck? I think your husband said that to me and said, sounds like something Scooby Doo would say. Oh my God. So totally true. Christian Todd Rex wrote. <laughs> it's like what Scooby would make up his own name. Rex wrote. Yeah. Rex wrote. <laughs> oh my God, this one. Jack De Wood. Jack D. D. Wood. God. Jack D. Wood. <laughs> Uh, that's what my uh, if i was a, stri- a male stripper like lumberjack character <laughs> that would be, my, would be my stage name jack d, <laughs> d. Wood, d. wood is taking the stage oh god somebody take that like run with it old old town road would be the only thing you ever oh, dance god. to <laughs> i i would love to it, it, talk about lil nas x for one second oh god I, what an angel down from heaven! I just, what a fucking masterpiece! What a I, he's such a he's such an he's angel. A miracle! He really he's a is. Miracle! The fact that he is like the biggest star in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. He's a openly, very openly black yeah. gay man. Ugh. All the hats off to you. I take them Shoot. off, and underneath every hat is another hat, and they just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I do it into infinity because Me you too. deserve it. You brave, beautiful little genius. Yep. Hats is off, yep. all of them. I was watching his new video last night, just like, Ugh. full. Of, I feel like he's my child. I'm so full of pride. Same. Same. Uh, makes me cry. Yeah. Me too. Yes. I, it's just... It, yep. Everything me. about him is a revelation, and yep. I'm so fucking proud of him. Me too. Is that all the uh, names? No, back oh, to what's man. important. Yeah. Other than like massive leaps and fucking civil rights and visibility right. and awareness. And, yeah. <laughs> um, Marsha Fay Cook Laguna Teal. <laughs> what? Marsha Fay Cook Laguna Teal. Where did that come from? Is a from? full last name. I think Ryan sent it to me. Oh my God. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sorry if it was somebody else, but. I'm giving him all the um, credit. Donald Licker. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 And last but not least, I think this this must be in LA. I've seen this a couple times lately, and somebody sent it to me. Burger, she wrote. <laughs> hooray! Uh, hip, hip, hooray! Yes. The burger, she wrote. Someone sent us on Instagram a uh, sandwich police car, oh, cop car, the town of Sandwich, which I yes. did not know existed, first of all. I'm moving there. I, 
No, I said it last week. Oh, Sandwich did you? Massachusetts. Fact, sorry, yeah, Courtney. That's fine. Tune me out. I get it. Yeah, I have to stop listening at some point. <laughs> <laughs> just sounds like this <laughs> you're right we did talk about sandwich yeah yeah we totally did you're i passed 100 right but yes but then somebody fucking spots sandwich police right after i talk <laughs> about it sends it to us yes i didn't even think about how they would have to have a police force because <laughs> i forgot I you told either. me about it initially <laughs> well and then one of our listeners and i went back and forth in instagram dms about how Yes, you should police sandwiches. No mayo? Mm-hmm. Sir, you're coming with me. <laughs> I cannot let you eat that dry acid sandwich. No way. <laughs> that is a direct violation. <laughs> Statute <laughs> 4, code C. I'm over here picturing myself like shoveling the sandwich in my mouth before the officer gets <laughs> down the road so he doesn't give me a citation. <laughs> I cite you. Oh, God. It's too thick or too thin. <laughs> Totally. God, remember that place in in college that served those sandwiches that were f- like as big as your head, and you have to like uh-huh. unhinge your jaw and you get your mouth all cut up on them. They're yes. glorious sandwiches, but impossible. What are to you eat. trying to do to these people? Yeah, I don't know. That is what am I supposed to scoop out the middle and save it for later? Like, what is this? <laughs> you just get whatever. sandwich police. Yeah, that oh, God, I got a code nine <laughs> in Eureka, Arcata, California. <laughs> Oh shit! Well, <laughs> that's good. That was some good stuff. That's good. <laughs> yes, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Usual. Um, well, I think that's you guys, what we got. We got what we got, and we gave it to you, yep. and uh, you do with it what you will. Yeah. And... Good luck. Good luck with that. All all of that stuff. <laughs> God, please go watch that video, though. My Ooh. God, please yeah. go watch. Good lordy. Yeah. Even if you just like watch the first few minutes and then skip through the middle and then watch, be sure to watch the end. She just like whoop. So <sighs> fucked up. Primal fears it. Mm-hmm. Megan, what's his name? Kevin Spacey's it. Kaiser So says it. Yeah. Also Kevin Spacey's it, because mm-hmm. we all thought he was good. Nope, nope, no. nope. Turns out he's no. not. Nope. Anyway. Anyway. Um, in the meantime, go find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at They Will Kill. You can email us at They Will Kill Podcast at gmail.com. And you can go to our website, They Will Kill dot com. Hey. Hey guys, rate, 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 and rate us. <laughs> Review and subscribe <laughs> to us, please. <laughs> you can rate four times. It's just going to the same place. But if you want to rate, 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 review and subscribe to us. That just, be like just a fine. seizure, I guess. <laughs> Max had drummed it. <laughs> totally. Uh, hey, AJ Bergans, thank you for your music. Thank you so much. And remember... Lil Nas X, go mm. listen to Montero. Mm. It's a solid mm-hmm. fucking album. Watch his mm-hmm. videos. I think mm-hmm. uh, maybe he'll bring music videos back, which would be a phenomenal thing, yes. like in general, yes. because his are so good and so, so watchable, good. and they make the songs even better and yep. more fun. And they make you want to laugh and cry. Yes, yes. telling these stories, sh- flying around, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sexy fucking dudes everywhere. Yep. Ugh. Yeah, yes. I, mean, I couldn't even pick a favorite if I had to try, if you, if you forced me to. Nope. Thank Can't you, either. Lil Nas. Thanks, Thank you. man. The world needed you right I'm, at this moment. I'm and glad you I'm your mom. <laughs> I'm glad so is your mom. You did a good job raising <laughs> that one. I did good. I did really yep. good. Yeah, and he was like a TikTok star too, wasn't he? He was like a TikTok guy. I have no idea. I'm almost 100% sure. I just It's either TikTok or YouTube, but I'm almost 100% sure he like won some TikTok. Probably challenge or like something but he came from fucking tiktok yeah he doesn't Even tell better. me these things because i'm his mom he's like mom dude, what are you doing in there with the video nas little <laughs> little nas, nas. X. mom um, get, close my door get out. yeah you gotta just... knock first <laughs> are you hey. making a country song <laughs> mom go <laughs> Oh, we love you guys. We love you so much. Go. We'll see you next time. Yeah, we will. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.